Hello, and welcome to the Adaptive Tuning Feature Walkthrough. We will introduce some key feature concepts and demonstrate these actions in a lab setting. A key challenge for controls engineers is that of finding an optimal tune for our systems quickly and reliably. An optimized tune depends heavily on the system characteristics. Each machine behaves differently due to variations in compliance, backlash, changing loads, manufacturing tolerances, machine degradation, and many more factors. With all the possible variations, the optimal tuning configuration can vary drastically across different loads, machines, and plants. Adaptive tuning has been created to simplify the tuning process and to minimize the amount of effort required by the system configurator to get an application up and running. It works by continuously monitoring the frequency spectrum of internal control signals and automatically executes tuning actions to optimize the control loop. Now let's review the scope of the tuning actions Adaptive Tuning performs. The feature has three distinctive responses in the low, mid, and high frequency ranges. Note that the illustration below is that of a simplified frequency spectrum and when the term frequency component is used, it is referring to a spectral line in the frequency spectrum. This is not to be confused with the run speed of the motor. The three frequency ranges can be configured using parameter number 2112 and 2113, while the thresholds in a unit of percent torque are configured using parameter numbers 2111, 2134, and 2135. All of the adaptive tuning configuration parameters can be found under the adaptive tuning subsection of the torque parameter family. Adaptive tuning is currently available in the PowerFlex 6000's flux vector control mode for induction machines. In the low frequency range, the available actions include gain optimization and gain stabilization. This is intended to infer marginal stability operating condition and either increases the effective regulator gains to allow closer operation to marginal stability or to reduce the gains when the system comes too close to marginal stability. In the mid frequency range, the available action is the automatic setting of four notch filters on the torque reference path. A system's characteristic resonances are excited by specific frequencies in the reference signal a properly configured notch filter removes such excitation components and only such components. This eliminates the resonance excitation, allowing the machine to operate much more efficiently. In the high frequency range, the available action is the detuning of the torque reference low pass filter. The presence of high frequency components often hint at a system entering instability and the lowering of the torque reference low pass filter bandwidth serves as a stop gap measure to prevent the system from becoming unstable. This prevents imminent faults resulting from unstable operating conditions, allowing for uninterrupted system runtime. This feature can be configured to perform different levels of automatic tuning, from being turned off or to just responding to the mid range or to act in all three frequency ranges. The scope of available tuning actions can be selected using parameter number 2110, Adaptive Tuning Config. Notably, each system would have different optimal ranges of low, mid, and high frequencies. What works for one system or application may not work for another. Please contact your Rockwell Automation Service representative or customer support for guidance on how to best configure adaptive tuning to your needs. Before we continue, let us familiarize ourselves with the test setup. One key challenge in demonstrating adaptive tuning in a lab environment is the fact that general purpose dynamo meter setups are often overbuilt and carefully calibrated to minimize the impact of coupling compliance or mechanical imperfections. As a result, it is very difficult to naturally excite the type of problems this feature is intended to detect and solve. 
Therefore, for demonstration purposes, frequency components symptomatic of undesirable system tunes are simulated by injecting sinusoidal loads. The diagram below illustrates the concept. Note that the various parameter values shown in the following videos have been selected in context of this demonstration. The configuration that best suits your applications will likely be different from what has been shown. Now let us move on to the videos of adaptive tuning in action. In the first video demonstration, we will observe the automatic detection of different mid-frequency components and the automatic setting of notch filters matching the frequencies detected. On the left, a PLC program's interface is shown. The section of interest is the sine wave injection portion. We will be injecting three different frequencies and picking up one characteristic frequency. All four notch filters will be set at the end. On the right is the CCW interface you may already be familiar with. We will be focusing on the adaptive tuning and torque filtering set of parameters. The drive is currently operational and a constant load has been applied. The sinusoidal load injections following this will be superimposed on this constant load level. Before the start of this video, adaptive tuning has been configured to match the intended frequency range of injections. See that with the feature off, the notch filters have not yet been automatically set. Now let's turn on the feature and select Tracking Notch Filter as the configuration option. Right as the feature is enabled, it has identified a minor characteristic resonance at around 15.5 Hz. A notch filter matching it has been set. Let's start injecting frequencies with the sine wave utility. For every injected frequency, observe that adaptive tuning identifies the frequency we just injected, and a torque reference notch filter is set to match that frequency. Now all four notch filters are set. Removing the harmonic content that initially set the filter does not reset it. This allows the filters to respond immediately to subsequent characteristic resonance events should they occur. Let us now review the impact of setting a notch filter targeting a resonance frequency. We can observe the impact of the notch filter. In this example, a 6 Hz sinusoidal load is constantly injected. The orange trace shows the torque current feedback when the load is applied, and notch filtering is inactive. We can observe that when adaptive tuning sets a notch filter at the injection frequency, the magnitude of the ripple on the torque current feedback is reduced. This reduction is observable in the blue trace. This concludes the notch filter setting demonstration. Let us move on to adaptive tuning's action in the low frequency range. We will be seeing how the regulator gain scalar changes in response to the presence of low frequency harmonic content. For this demonstration, only one frequency will be injected. 
Recall that the low frequency limit is set by parameter number 2112. It is currently set to 9 Hz. Adaptive tuning mode shall be set to gain optimization. Note that the moment adaptive tuning is enabled in gain optimization mode, the regulator gain scalar starts to increase. Its value can be observed using parameter number 2121, adaptive tuning gain scale. This scalar starts at the value of 1 and rises in increments set by parameter number 2136. The lower and upper bounds of this scaling factor can be configured using parameter number 2119 and 2141. For now, the upper limit is set to be 2, or 2 times the existing system bandwidth. Now let's start injecting a sine wave load at a periodicity below the frequency load limit. This simulates low frequency oscillatory behavior, which is a common indicator of a system operating in marginal stability. To resolve this, we wish to reduce the effective system bandwidth. It is observed that the gain scalar starts to drop. As long as the marginal stability condition persists, the gain will be continuously lowered. Once the gain scalar low limit is reached, adaptive tuning will no longer detune the regulator gains. Now let's toggle the sine wave injection on and off and observe the gain scalar. It is observed that in the absence of low frequency components, adaptive tuning uptunes the gain. In the presence of low frequency components, adaptive tuning detunes the gain. This persistent auto optimization allows the control loop to always operate at the optimal gain setting. We can observe the effects of the gain scalar by studying the velocity tracking performance in response to a torque load step. Once adaptive tuning updates the gain scalar, the value is retained and a load step is applied. In the comparisons below, we see the velocity dip resulting from the load step. The blue trace represents the system response when the gain scale is 1. Now let's look at the orange trace. When the gain scalar is detuned to 0.75, the effective system bandwidth is reduced. This results in a larger velocity dip and a longer settling time. Likewise, when the gain scalar continues detuning to 0.5, the effective system bandwidth is further reduced. This is shown by the gray trace. It is observed that the step response changes just like it would if the velocity regulator gains were manually updated. This concludes the gain optimization demonstration. Finally, let us look at adaptive tuning's action in the high frequency range. This time, we shall make use of the Dyne's natural frequency and configure adaptive tuning such that it is recognized as a high frequency component. Note the approximate 19.5 most prominent mid-range frequency component detected when adaptive tuning is off. We will now set parameter 2113, frequency high limit to 17 Hz. This will cause adaptive tuning to recognize the 19 Hz detected as a high frequency component. Observe that with adaptive tuning turned off, all the torque reference filters are again set to their original configurations. Note parameter number 2156, the actual torque low pass filter bandwidth which now sits at 359 Hz. When the feature is enabled, the low pass filter starts to detune and stops when the filter bandwidth matches the offending high frequency components value.
Observe that when the high frequency component is detected by adaptive tuning, the torque low pass filter bandwidth decreases from the original 359 Hz to 20.2 Hz. This concludes the video demonstration of adaptive tuning on the PowerFlex 6000T drive. In this video demonstration, we observed adaptive tuning's response in the presence of low, mid, and high frequency resonance events. It is observed that adaptive tuning automatically sets gains and filters to optimize the tune of the control loop. Please contact your Rockwell Automation Service representative or customer support for more information on configuring this feature for your applications.